This is going to be the third type of, or third classification of, of combination nozzle or fog nozzle that we're going to cover. And sometimes these nozzles are called constant flow. Because when you start talking about, uh, we've talked about the constant pressure nozzle or the automatic nozzle. Now it's time to tar start discussing the constant flow. And what the, the point that I would like to get across to you is that when you think about the low pressure constant gallonage nozzle, regardless of the manufacturer, you need to really think about the operation being similar to a smoothbore. When it comes to smoothbore operations, we have two variables to consider. We have size of the bore and pressure applied. Well, when you start picking up the uh, low pressure constant gallonage series, the size of the bore or the opening in the end of the line or in, excuse me, in the end of the nozzle doesn't change. So our flow that we get out the end of the nozzle is a direct function of the pressure that we apply at the base of the nozzle. These, these nozzles give a constant flow at a constant pressure. The reason that they give a constant flow at a constant pressure is because we have an engineered orifice size that does not change. The opening at the end of the nozzle doesn't change. So whether you have a, uh, this happens to be an Akron Assault style, low pressure constant gallonage nozzle, <clears throat> and this happens to be a, uh, an Elkhart low pressure T chief. But if you look at the end of the nozzle, that T stem, you can push it and, uh, and move it just by pressure of your finger. So whether you put 10 pounds or 110 pounds here, the size of that opening doesn't change because the stem goes all the way every time. So because of that, the opening size remains consistent, so our flow that we get out the end of the nozzle becomes a factor of one, engineering the size of the nozzle and, the, and where, what type of hose or size of hose the nozzle is meant to be utilized on and the pressure we apply. Most of the time, these nozzles operate at either 50 or 75 pounds. That's why they're typically called low pressure constant gallonage nozzles. And uh, the example I'll use is, is this one that I'm holding happens to be a, a 250 at 50. And if you don't know, most of them are stamped right on the end of the nozzle. This one has 250 over top of 50. It, it gives you a good indication. And we know that 250 is a good number for two inch hose line. So we would put this nozzle on a two inch line and we could be fairly successful with it. In the case of the Akron, it's plainly written. This is a 125 gallon a minute nozzle, operates at 75 PSI operating pressure. So max flow out of inch and, inch and a half hose is 125 gallons. This line is meant to be used on an inch and a half hose line. <clears throat> so you have to match, again, flow of the nozzle with the capability of the hose to supply that. The last point I would make about the, the low pressure constant gallonage nozzle is that, you know, they operate at lower than standard pressures anyway. So under pressurizing the line or under pumping that line can really lead to kinking issues and develop, you can develop safety problems on the initial attack line. So it's important to remember if it's, if it's designed to ha operate at 75, pump it for 75. If it's designed to operate for 50, pump it at 50 and make sure you, you, you put those, two, those nozzles on a line that has the capability of supplying that, that nozzle. Because again, the constant gallonage combination nozzle, engineered size, discharge orifice, it, the function of the, how much water we get out of it becomes a function of the pressure that we apply to it.